In this video of csharp.net, we are going to do something beyond a simple multi-threading. Here, we are going to use the task parallel library. In short, we can also call it TPL. So basically, using task parallel library, you can achieve the same concurrency and parallelism in your execution in a much easier way. As task parallel library will give you more clear way to do the concurrent task all together. Each task will be having some asynchronous operation which you can also perform while working with the TPL. As I said, it's a parallel programming or I can also achieve the parallelism. So then let's see how we can do that actually. Basically, nowadays whichever processor you are working with are multi-core processors. So far in the multi-threading, we are only using the single core of the processor using which you may not achieve the full functionality or full performance benefit from a particular processor. So the task parallel library will run the each task parallelly in the different cores of the processor so that the task will be even more faster as the earlier multi-threaded applications. So let's see how we can do the task parallel library, how we can implement the task parallel library in C Sharp now. To start the implementation of task parallel library along with the system.threading namespace, I have also included system.threading.task. This task namespace will provide me a task class which will help me out to provide the task and the concept of parallel execution. Now, in order to implement a simple task concept we have the concept here like first of all I have defined a method called do work which is doing some tasks for me for each particular task I am assigning an ID and a sleep time that sleep time will be considered as the time taken to complete a particular task now here in the main method as we can see I have started a task where I use this task class you can also take task right here rather than where all right and then t1 is equal to new task and in this particular task i have passed a lambda expression which is internally invoking this do work method so in the id i'm passing whether it's one two or three like any number and the sleep time in milliseconds like 1 second, 3 seconds and 1.5 second in order to complete a task. As we were starting a particular thread during the implementation of threading like thread.start method was there. Similarly we have the task.start method as well. As here you can see t1, t2, t3.start which will actually start the execution of a specific task. And as soon as it is done we will get this message and I'll have to press a key in order to terminate that task. So let's see how it is looking like in the output. So as you can see here, firstly task 2, task 1 and task 3 started execution and then as per their time taken to complete the execution, the task got completed like task 1, task 3, task 2. All right. Similarly, let's execute it again. Again, you will see the ending is of the same sequence because the time taken is very same and the output will look similar. But what I'm doing here, first of all, I'm initializing a particular task in order to perform that. And then in the next line, I'm starting that particular task. I can make my code even easier using the factory in the task and that will help me out in a way like I don't have to start the task separately as soon as I will assign a particular task it will be started let's see how can I do that so as here you can see here I use task.factory and then start new so in this start new you will see again I'm passing a task here inside through a lambda expression which is internally calling do work along with an ID and the sleep time all right so you can see i have not separately started a new task or any task like t1.start but it will itself start that by its own so in the output task 1 2 3 and 3 to 1 
completed again on the basis of the time taken by the specific time. You can also do the chaining thing in a very easier manner while working with system.threading.task in the task parallel library. Suppose I have one more method here called do other work which is again taking the same id and sleep time and I am printing a different message like other task other task. I have just changed the added that particular word here and again I will have to pass the id and sleep time. Now what I will have to do is I want to chain this particular method invocation with any of that task and I can do that easily with the method called dot continue with. So here by using this dot continue with method the con with this continue with method I can simply chain this particular method after any or all the tasks right here. Like here you can see continue with and then it is again invoking the method called do other work and here again I am passing the id 1 and 2000 milliseconds. So let's see how the output will look like but make sure in the output you can see this other work method only when the first task is completed like it is a chaining thing so it will allow the first task to be completed first and then it will start this other work. So let's see in the output that. So now you see task 3 is completed as soon as task 1 is completed other task 1 is beginning and then it is completed. Alright, so this is how you can start working with this task in order to perform the parallel programming in your .NET framework. Now let's see one more implementation right here. Suppose I have a collection like here you can see I have taken an integer array of 10 elements and let's say in re reading this particular collection I take one second for each data for each record. So if I will do that thing with a simple for loop as you can see here I am executing it from 0 to 9 and when I will execute it as we know that it will take 10 seconds in order to read this complete array because only one core is reading the data at a time and you can see after 10 seconds I am done with reading this particular array. As here I have paused my execution using this thread.sleep but if I will do this very same task with a parallel for rather than this traditional for loop like this then I will have a faster output like here this parallel will be there in the system.threading.task namespace and here you will get this for loop here is the starting point that is 0 that is excluded from the upper limit and then I the responsible variable for executing this loop and again inside this loop I have done the very same thing but if I will execute this loop you will see hardly in two seconds I am able to read all my data sequence is not very same but actually it does hardly matters when it's about reading the data I should get all the records faster and then later I can arrange the sequence if required so this is how the parallel programming and the task parallel library will help us to enhance the performance of a particular program.